Hello friends, let's discuss uh, current affairs and today's first question relates to the protest in Iran. Iran's uh, seeing a lot of protests, massive protests, especially from the younger generation, um, within which you could say that a lot of young people, um, you know, especially young women are out on the streets to protest against uh, moral, the morality police and of course the hardline government. So what's the story behind this entire thing? See, hijab is a head scarf. It's a scarf that's worn around the head to cover the hair, especially you know the mainly the hair. Now there was this girl, um, you know, um, who had come from a place in northwest Iran uh, called um, Sakej. Okay, the name of the town was Sakej. S A Q E Z, and this was a Kurdish woman. In north, uh, sorry, uh, northwest is here basically. Yeah. This is the entire Kurdish region. This region is Kurdish region. This one, this particular part is Kurdish. Okay. So she had come from this place and she was visiting the capital Tehran. Her name was Mahasa Amini as the, in the question. Okay. Now it is believed that while she was visiting some friends here in the city, she was noticed by the morality police. Uh, as not as not as not wearing the headscarf appropriately. What is the word? Appropriately. It is believed that some of our hair was visible, you know, through the headscarf. So they they caught hold of her. They took her to detention center, to a police station you could call. And um, the idea was to what they said to educate that woman. Educate that woman. This is all the terms that they used. Um, I follow Iran on a daily basis, so I can tell you I've been following these protests ever since they broke out. Uh, even otherwise, I follow Iran, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Israel uh, on a daily basis, these four countries. But you know, uh, the protest came only after she died. When she was detained and taken to a detention center, it is believed that she died of beatings by the morality police. While the morality police say that she died of a heart attack, her family and human her family members and human rights organizations say that um, she died of beatings. She died from beatings by the morality police. Okay. So people came out in her support. She was no more, but people came out. They protested in large numbers against the morality police. Uh, they said that we shall not wear scarf. Who are you to impose your moral values on us? You know, who and how, how do you define moral values? They said, just because some cleric says that this is what you should be wearing. Should we be wearing that? Now, uh, where is this veil coming in? V E I L veil. Okay. What is the morality police? So let me tell you what's the morality police and then I'll talk about the veil. The morality police is called Gashte um, Irshad. Gashte Irshad. Gasht G A S H T hyphen E hyphen Irshad. E R S H A D. Which is basically Gasht means Gasht Lagana, you know, patrol, P A T R O L. Ershad is about guidance. So, guidance patrols, P A T R O L. Patrol means people going around to keep other, you know, negative elements in check. So, Gasht Ershad is the name or the Iranian name of the guidance patrols. These are similar to the old, you know, earlier in Saudi Arabia, there was something similar. Uh, which is called the Department for the Prevention of Vice, V-I-C-E, and Promotion of Virtue. Department for the Promotion of Virtue and Prevention of Vice, something similar. In Saudi Arabia, it was there. Now, long, now it does not exist in the same way as it existed in the past. So, Iran said that the Gasht the Irshad, uh, you know, members noticed this woman. Mahasa Amini not wearing her hijab appropriately. So they took her, you know, to a detention center to re-educate her 
on the principles of Islam governing modesty, sharam. You know, uh, these are very difficult words, my friends. Um, so she died, it seems, um, of a heart attack. That's what these guys say. But her family, to repeat myself, the family alleges that she died of beatings by the these guys, uh, by the Gashtair Shad fellows. Now, whatever the truth is, the truth is always clouded because of no transparency in Iran. Iran is a highly controlled society. Okay, it is what is called a clerical society. C l e r i c a l, clerical society. Now, these women protested under the theme Woman, Life, Freedom. Three words. Woman, Life, Freedom. Okay. So, three words were the moving force behind this entire protest movement. Woman, Life, Freedom. She says, Freedom is, they, these women say that, protesting women say that uh, it's just not the women that are protesting, all, you know, even men of, um, of a similar age group, young people, are uh, protesting against this. They say veil should not be mandatory. Veil should not be mandatory and it cannot be that if someone's not wearing it appropriately as defined by this Gashte Shad, you know, should invite this kind of punishment that could lead to death of a young woman. So this woman came in large and came out, these protesters came in, came out in large numbers against the hardline government and they chanted death to the dictator. Now you may wonder what's the dictator here, who's the dictator? See Iran in 1979, let me tell you a story here. Um, Iran in 1979 experienced an Islamic revolution. This revolution was led by a Shia cleric, C L E R I C, the Mullah. Shia cleric priest named Ayatollah Khomeini. Ayatollah Khomeini was not in Iran when this revolution took place. He was in France. Why? Because he was thrown out of the country for dissent, D I S S E T, sorry, E N T, dissent. For criticism of the then ruling monarchy in Iran. In 1979, Iran was controlled by a monarchy belonged to what is called the Shah Pehlavi dynasty or simply the Shah dynasty or the Pehlavi dynasty, P E H L A V I, Pehlavi dynasty. So there was a Raja at that time called Reja, okay, R E J A or R E Z A, how do you? Reja was known to be a dictator, was known to be an absolute despot. There was massive corruption, cronyism, he would favor it. He would always give contracts, business contracts to his favorite people, members of extended family and all. And he was pro-West, he was pro-West. But the people of Iran were fed up with the corruption, unemployment, inflation in that country. And they also saw that most of the employees, most of the jobs, limited number of jobs uh, uh, were going to members of the ruling, you know, the inner circle. Mm, so they came out on the roads, they protested in large numbers, so much so that it became violent. And um, the Islamic revolution started in Iran. That year in Iran, people protested in such a way that the Reja, at the time the monarch was abroad, he could not come back. So the monarchy was removed, abolished, an Islamic caliphate, sorry, an Islamic system was built, you know, put in place. We call it the clerical administration because this entire administrative setup in Iran is controlled by the religious people, the mullahs. Look, I am telling you a story. I am telling a story as it happened. I have no personal interest in this. I basically don't believe in religion and all these things. So I am using words that most of us would understand. Okay? And Iran traditionally has been a Shia Muslim country. 
95% of the Muslims in Iran follow Shia Islam. Shia Islam. Shia Islam does not see eye to eye with Sunni Islam, which is favored and followed by nearly 80% of the world's Muslims, global Muslims. Okay. So the monarch was out. Islamic revolution came in. Islamic clerical system came in. They put in place a system wherein the, the main voice will be that of the spiritual leader of the country. In this case, Ayatollah Khomeini. Today, it is Ayatollah Khomeini. K-H-A-M-E-I-N-I. -E -E, Khomeini. Khomeini is dead. Khomeini is in place. So he runs the country with an iron fist. His voice is the most powerful voice. He says something, it's done. He says... That it shall not be done, it won't be done, kind of thing. So he rules more like a dictator. That's why the chant, you know, chant, you know, death to the dictator, death to the dictator. That's dictator is the spiritual, spiritual leader of Iran. So, you know, the ruling party, see, ruling party means the ruling administrative setup is full of hardliners. They are anti-America, anti-Israel, anti-Saudi Arabia, anti-anyone who is not with them. Okay. And uh, they don't believe in giving freedoms to their people. Like, you know, you, you, um, the lot of freedoms that have gone away from women after 1979, like they cannot um, work, they cannot travel without some people, someone accompanying them. They cannot um, work in certain kinds of roles. They cannot have custody of children over seven years of age. So these are all rules there. I mean, and today it's youngsters who are rebelling. 18, 19, 20, 21 year old, 21, 23, 24, below 30. You even wonder what's the number about. See, the revolution happened in 79. It's been 20 plus now, another 20, 40 years. So these people, the younger generation, does not identify its, you know, themselves with the ideals of the Iranian revolution, the Islamic revolution. They don't believe in this. They believe in freedom. They believe in freedom of choice. They believe in freedom of expression. The government doesn't believe in them. Okay. So it's pretty hard line. There is a great deal of violence by the state against the protesters. And as of today, 76 people have died in Iran, uh, though the government quotes a lower number. Things are pretty bad in Iran. Yeah, pretty bad. So in any case, someday I will tell you a longer story. If you like these kinds of stories, let me know. You send a feed, send feedback, info at timeforeducation.com. And um, you want me to tell you more stories like this? Yes. Or you want me to tell you, um, you know, stories in a slower way, slow, halting way? I'll go with that also. Okay. So... There are a lot of protests there, basically. Anyway, that's the story, my friends. Okay. Iranian president is uh, a guy called Ibrahim Rezi. Ibrahim Rezi. The Ibrahim here starts with E. Ibrahim Rezi. R-A-I-S-I. This is Qatar. You see, this is choice one. This is Qatar. Qatar is run by is this the capital of Doha this is the venue of the 2022 football world cup football world cup this year the football world cup will be held in Qatar okay and ladies and gentlemen it's also going to host the 2030 asian games 2030 asian games 2030 asian games and 2022 fifa men's football world cup cool that's the capital Doha. It's um, ruled by a man called Tamim. Don't write. Tamim Al Thani. Don't write. Two, three inf bits of information, right? Sports you wrote. You wrote. So, Iraq. Uh, that's Iraq. This is Iraq here. And um, this is um, this in the past was called Mesopotamia or Mesopotamia. See, the name Mesopotamia comes from two separate words. Meso or Meso means middle, Potam means river. The land between two rivers. Hmm. What are the two rivers? T 
Tigris, T I G R I S, Tigris or Tigris, and Euphrates, E U P H R A T E S, Euphrates. So the land between the two rivers of Tigris and Euphrates is called Mesopotamia, and today Turkey, sorry, today's Iraq is more or less in that area. Okay, it's fun to learn. <laughs> You see, there is a certain kind of silk called Damask, D-A-M-A-S-K. It comes from the name Damascus. Okay. Yeah. More than 200 pilot whales recently beached themselves in a mass stranding in Macquarie Harbour, Tasmania, which is in Australia. See, this is Australia. It's a pretty large country. 76 lakh square kilometer, kilometer big. 76 lakh square kilometer big and what is 76 lakh like India's area is 32 lakhs a little over 32 lakhs and their area is 76 lakh so you see that yeah it's twice more than bigger than India um, this province is called Tasmania this island you see here it's Tasmania T-A-S-M-A-N-I-A -A -A. this is Tasmania now Certain whales called pilot whales, they were caught here and about 200, of, in fact there are about 160 that died. Some were rescued by, you know, animal lovers, by the government, but unfortunately a lot of these died. Let me tell you about pilot waves. Why the name pilot, P-I-L-O-T? Um, See, it is believed that, now how big is the whale, these whales? How big are these whales? The length is 7.6 meters in average. Average length, 7.6 meters. Average weight, 2,300 kilos. 2,300 kilos. And average length, 7.6 meters. Quite long, quite big. It is believed that, these whales move in groups of 20 to 100. 20 to 100. And they all follow one whale at the top, at the beginning of the group, in the very, you know, in the, in the start of the group or beginning of the group, there is one at the top. Everyone, every other member follows that whale. That's why that whale is called pilot and this, these whales are called pilot whales. They follow someone who guides them. The guy, one who guides them is a pilot. That's it. Nothing else. That's why they're called pilot whales. Hmm? They were caught in the waters here. Something went bad. And um, they died in large numbers. Yeah. It's always a sad thing to see unnecessary death. Yeah. Madagascar, um, you know, it's a separate country. It's the fourth biggest island in the world fourth biggest island in the world and you would find that its capital is Antananarivo A-N-T-A-N-A-N-A-R-I-V-O Antananarivo Okay Antananarivo and um, Wellington, New Zealand Australia, Canberra this is where you have Canberra Okay This Canberra Fiji is north here, up here, um, northeast of Australia. The capital is Suva, S-U-V-A, Suva. Argentina's capital is Buenos Aires, B-U-E-N-O-S, Buenos Aires, A-I-R-E-S, Buenos Aires. Okay, Buenos Aires. I can give you the names of the leaders of these countries, but information overload is bad. Sometimes we need to take it easy. Okay, the Madagascar's president is a guy called Andrew Rajolina. New Zealand Prime Minister is Jacinda Ardern. Australia, Anthony Albanese. Fiji, the Prime Minister is Frank Baini Marama. Argentina, you know, they have a new president there. So, I mean, uh, uh, no, uh, sorry, Albert Fernandez. You know, the idea here is that it's not that you need to remember everything, it's to become familiar. Put something together. I mean, known with unknown club, you will get the answer. You will get to remember better. Yeah, that's how I remember. 
I, I try to remember, you know, by putting two and two together. I know it could be 22 or four, depending on the context. Okay, so please work hard and learn with an objective of single one, one single thing to become better. Better in every possible way, you know. To control inflation, the US Federal Reserve, which is the central bank of the United States, like our RBI, pushed interest rates to the highest level in almost 15 years. It raised its key rate by another 0.75 percentage, lifting the target range to, okay, 3 to 3.25 percent. Now, I want you to know something here. See, globally, there is inflation. Sorry, guys. Globally, there is inflation. And um, inflation, one way to beat inflation is um, raising interest rates. When you raise interest rates, you, let's say I'm the RBI, I raise interest rates. When I raise interest rates, the cost of borrowing increases. Okay, two things happen. Interest rates rise. When interest rates high, two things happen. One, the cost of borrowing, that is the interest I pay on my borrowings also increases, also increase. Two is that the interest on deposits also increase. Now, the second one would tell me, hey, Bharat, don't spend, man. Save. You will earn more money on your deposits. So I try and postpone it. You know, my spending, I save money. Two, if I look at the first one, rather not two, if I look at the first one, that is, if I'm borrowing money to buy a house, to buy a car, to buy something, or I'm a business person, I'm, I want to borrow money to set up some industrial capacity, um, then, you know, there is a problem. The cost of production would go up because of high interest rates. And that would mean it would eat into my profits and all that. So I would postpone investment also. When I postpone its investment, I'm not employing, employing people. When I don't employ people, I, you know, for people don't have jobs. When people don't have jobs, they don't have purchasing power. When they don't have purchasing power, they don't have, you know, um, you know, they don't demand goods and services. When they don't demand goods and services, the demand falls. When the demand falls, prices fall. If you look at the deposits, interest rates, I don't say, I don't spend, I save. The money goes into the bank. When the money goes into the bank, I don't have money. When I don't have money, I don't have demand for goods and services because now I don't have money. And that means I don't have purchasing power. When I don't have purchasing power, I don't demand goods and services. When I don't demand goods and services, I don't create demand. And if there is no demand, obviously the prices will fall. So the RBI is increasing interest rates. America also is increasing interest rates. What is inflation in America? 8.3% today. 8.3% in the last week of September. I am recording this one day before your class in the second, in the almost second half of the day. So inflation is 8.3%. That means that prices have increased by 8.3% since one in the last one year. In the last one year. So things are pretty bad. Hmm? Maybe in the next class I will tell you about interest rates, why the value of the dollar is rising. And why currencies like the Indian rupee, the Chinese yuan, renminbi yuan, the, the British pound, they're all going down the drain. We'll discuss that. This is my favorite subject, discussing global economy. Hmm? Connecting 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4 is easy when you know things. You can get there by working hard, by learning things. Things are tough. They always are tough. If they were easy, when any Tom, Dick and Harry could do it, now nah, you're doing it the harder way because it's, you have that capacity in you to learn things. Always learn. Always focus on learning to become better. Raju Srivastava, the great comedian, passed away recently, my friends. Because I can tell you, after, you know, after Johnny Lieber, the greatest comedy in India has produced. I'm talking of not cinema comedians, okay? Standalone comedy and all that. He made it popular. He was a guy who made it popular. He, we, most of us used to watch him on the Great Indian Laughter Challenge. Yeah, it was awesome. He introduced a character called, um, you know, uh, Gajodhar. Gajodhar Bhaiya. Unfortunately, he, he died... Um, after uh, suffering multiple organ failure, but uh, a heart attack, 
and that happened uh, while he was in a coma and the coma happened because he while exercising in the gym he fell and he collapsed as he collapsed he's you know people say he had you know a heart attack at the time then he went into a coma again in the coma he had he experienced another heart attack yeah he was i think 58 years old as per the first advanced estimates of production of major kharif crops the total food grain production is estimated at okay it's already mentioned 149.9 which is 150 million tons million tons now i want you to know something here that the kharif crop is also called summer crop summer or monsoon extended summer is monsoon crop the sowing starts sometime in may okay seeding starts in may and um, these crops require a lot of water so monsoon is the right time seeding happens planting happens in may okay and june the monsoon starts june july august september so typically the, the, the may to june may to september is the time of kharif crops that's the season also called kharif also called summer or monsoon crops some examples would be rice cotton um bajra yeah rice cotton bajra three good examples the other kind of season is rabi r a b i which is you know typically um winter season it's a winter crop these they, they these crops um, what we say require a lot of water but more importantly they generally grow in dry areas up in the north okay wheat is a good example then what example can i give you um mustard yeah barley yeah millet uh, sorry pulses so pretty good examples there pulses you know um barley wheat okay so rabi is winter and kharif is summer we are likely to produce have a you know total food grain production in excess of 330 million tons this year let's hope things get better this is a stock question nothing to do with current affairs which of the following is often referred to as the asian nobel prize not asian nobel prize asian peace nobel prize or asian nobel peace prize asian nobel peace prize okay so ramon max is a what you could write this um instituted or named after named after former philippine president former president of philippines p h i l i p p i n e s philippines philippines former president of philippines dash first given first given in 1958 first award was given in 1958 1958 next first indian recipient first indian recipient vinoba bhave vinoba vinoba v i n o b a vinoba bhave b h a v e bhave vinoba bhave you know vinoba bhave was nicknamed acharya he was he is the guy who started the bhudan movement land donation movement land bank movement hmm? some other time we will discuss the choices here yeah. which of the following are the sponsors of regional rural banks public sector banks so you could write regional rural banks regional rural banks dash started 1975 started 1975 dash 43 rrbs today 43 rrbs in operation 43 rrbs in operation dash dash capital provided by capital provided by government of india or central government central government in brackets 50% 50% comma state government 
in brackets 15 one five percent central government is five zero state government is one five and sponsor bank sponsor bank dash public sector bank sponsored bank dash public sector bank in brackets 35 percent 35 percent 35 percent see you got to know all about rrbs in one line yeah With which institution or organization has the UNEP recently signed an MOU to tackle the issue of plastic pollution and achieve the universal goal of clean water bodies through Punit Sagar Abhiyan and Tide Turner's Plastic Challenge Program? And the answer is still there. I will tell you a bit about the NCC. If you want to write, you could write this. NCC, underline that first point. Established 1948, established 1948, next, head office, New Delhi, third point, director general, Let, lieutenant general or LG, LG, Gurbir Pal, G U R, I repeat, G U R B I R P A L. G U R B I R P A L Gurbir Pal Singh Gurbir Pal Singh Next Moto M O T T O Moto It's there in Hindi here Ekta or Anusashan If you want to write in Hindi you could write Ekta or Anusashan in English Ekta is unity and Anusashan is discipline. So unity and discipline. Unity and discipline. Next, you see the emblem. This is the emblem of the NCC. I want you to know this. There are three colors as you can see. Red. You could write next, right? Youth wing of, youth wing of Indian Armed Forces. Indian Armed Forces. Indian Armed Forces. Next. Emblem Colors. Emblem Colors. Dash. Red for Indian Army. Red for Indian Army. Dark Blue for Indian Navy. Indian Navy. And light blue fur, light blue fur, light blue fur, Indian Air Force, Indian Air Force, next, the 17 lotuses, you see this lotuses, there are 17 of these. The 17 lotuses represent represent the 17 directorates, 17 directorates, D I R E C T O R A T E S directorates. 17 directorates of India. Okay, there we go, guys. Plenty of stuff you wrote. Hmm. Who of the following former Supreme Court judges? Ne? Supreme Court judge has been appointed with the Supreme Court to lead the task to amend the constitution of the Indian Olympic Association. You could write this Indian Olympic Association dash dash um, Secretary General 
सेक्रेटरी जनरल सेक्रेटरी जनरल राजीव मेहता राजीव मेहता वाइल फॉर्मर प्रेसिडेंट वाइल फॉर्मर प्रेसिडेंट नरेंद्र बात्रा नरेंद्र बात्रा बी ए टी आर ए नरेंद्र बात्रा हैज बीन डिसमिस्ड डिसमिस्ड सो करंट एस जी इज राजीव मेहता एंड द एक्स प्रेजिडेंट इज नरेंद्र बात्रा नेक्स्ट द इन इंटरनेशनल ओलंपिक कमिटी द इंटरनेशनल ओलंपिक कमिटी हैज वॉन्ड इंडियन ओलंपिक एसोसिएशन टू होल्ड जनरल बॉडी इलेक्शंस टू होल्ड जनरल बॉडी इलेक्शंस एंड सॉर्ट आउट एस ओ आर टी सॉर्ट आउट गवर्नेंस इश्यूज गवर्नेंस इश्यूज sort out governance issues sort out governance issues by december 2022 december 2022 dash put a long dash failing which failing which failing which the ioa indian olympic association will be suspended or will be banned will be banned by the international olympic committee by the international olympic committee okay yeah these sports bodies are used as personal empires by people like narendra patra yeah i mean he is he has earned a notoriety in multiple places yeah he was there as the president of the indian um, i would say hockey india there also he was thrown out there after that you know this um, uh, indian we were not we were not allowed to set up you know there is a fifa also praful patel ran the show at fifa for a long time under you know because of him fifa banned indian chapter indian football is aiff sorry aiff all india football federation was banned by fifa yeah the under 20 under 17 fifa world cup was also taken away from india so a lot of things are happening you know in the indian sports arena in the on the administrative side while our sports persons are doing their you know their best to earn glory for our country the politicians the bureaucrats uh, self appointed keepers you know uh, gate keepers of the sports associations they are ruining the sport yeah it's the same everywhere which of the following health initiatives of the government of india has won the 2022 un inter agency task force and the who special program on primary health care award okay before i tell you you if you would want to write who's director general's name you could write who director general dr tedros t e d r o s t e d r o s tedros and hanum a d h a n o m e d h a n o m tedros and hanum next chief scientist chief scientist dr soumya swaminathan soumya swaminathan soumya swaminathan okay so what is this hypertension control initiative basically hypertension is high bp <laughs> but it has a different meaning so if you want to write i can give you a simple idea um award for or awarded for awarded for 
सक्सेसफुल मल्टी सेक्टोरल एक्शन सक्सेसफुल मल्टी See why I go slow and why I would want you to write is that when you write, you tend to remember much better. Actually, write. When I write, you know, I somewhere things go into my mind, you know, uh, in a much better way than they would if I would simply read things. Yeah. For successful multi-sectoral action to prevent and control, to prevent and control. non communicable diseases non communicable diseases and delivering and delivering integrated primary care primary care close to cloc close to where people live where people live and work where people live and work do you know who is the health minister of india mansukh mandavia mansukh mandavia m a n d a v i y a mandavia mansukh mandavia okay roger federer waved goodbye to professional tennis after teaming up with fellow great rafael nadal at the laver cup which was played at um, london I want you to write about Laver Cup. They may ask you which of the following is incorrect about Laver Cup kind of questions. So please, why don't you write Laver Cup? Okay, underline that first point. Always play, played between. Always played between. Team Europe, Team Europe, and Team World. Team Europe and Team World. team europe and team world next next um each team has each team has the best six rank players out the top six ranked players top six rank players top rank six rank players okay now team europe the top six rank players team world they could be from anywhere they are there the top six next um 2022 winner 2022 winner team world team world in brackets first title first title next captain of or rather yeah captain of they may ask you this question captain of team world team world dash john mckendro i'll spell j o h n john mckendro m c e n r o e i repeat m c e n r o e mckendro in brackets us us next team of sorry captain of captain of team europe team europe team europe dash john borg b j b j o r n b j o r n john borg b o r g borg in brackets sweden sweden see borg and mckendro are both world number former world number ones okay you want to write one last point you could write team winning or other winning team winning team must score 13 points must score 13 points so whichever team scores 13 points first wins the laver cup okay yeah so team europe had novak djokovic roger federer rafael nadal andy murray 
um, Kiriak, what's his name? Stephanos, Sitsipas, top class. But yet they lost. Okay. Yeah. Dilip Asbe has been reappointed MD and CEO of the National Payments Corporation of India. You could write what does it do? The National Payments Corporation of India dash established 2008 established 2008 dash operates or regulates regulates retail payments retail payments and settlement systems and settlement systems and settlement systems in India in India they built the UPI unified payments interface yeah NEFT, RTGS, all these technologies come from this organization. Okay, next. Is there anything else that you would need to know? I guess no. It is NPCI is, you could write, part of NPCI dash owned by RBI. Owned by RBI. So it's a part of Ministry of Finance. Okay. Phone pay is an aggregate wrap. So you have three guys Rahul Chari, Samir Nigam, and um, Burjin. Yeah. Um, Burjin. Burjin engineer something. Yeah. So all these guys started phone pay. The IDRBT in the previous class we discussed uh, what's this? Uh, in, uh, Institute for Development of Development and research in banking technology. It's, it's a Hyderabad based organization. According to the July 20, 2022 report of the Department of Promotion of Industries and Internet Trade, which state emerged as India's top investment destination, attracting investments to the tune of nearly 40,000 crore in the first seven months of 2022. Andhra Pradesh. Second was Odisha, 36,000 crore. 36 make it 37,000 crore okay so Odisha number two 37,000 crore so together these two states contribute rather make for nearly 45 percent the investment India received you could write this in January in January July in January to July 2022 India received India received 1.71 lakh crore rupees 1.71 lakh crore rupees in investment in foreign investment foreign investment yeah it's a good thing yeah but in the series these two states of Andhra Pradesh and Odisha make for 45% of 1.71 lakh crore. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing that states are doing well. Yeah, ultimately it spreads development uh, among the local people. So who is the Chief Minister of Odisha? Navin Patnaik. Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh is Vyas Jaganamohan Reddy. Yeduguri Sandinti Jaganamohan Reddy. Okay. Whom the following has been re-elected, sorry, has been elected Hockey India's first player president. That is Dilip Turki. Okay, or Tirke. Dilip uh, is a former India hockey captain, considered one of the best, you know, hockey, uh, penalty corner specialists. And um, I think penalty corner and forward basically. Yeah. He is from Odisha. He was elected unopposed unopposed my friends which is a very good thing yeah he received the Padma Shri in 2004 Padma Shri in 2004 so anything else not much basically by the way Hockey India earlier it was called Indian Hockey Federation it was renamed Hockey India in 2009 2009 and the president uh, sorry this he is the president. The CEO. 
CEO of Hockey India is Elena Norman. Elena, A L E N A. Elena Norman, N O R M A N. Elena Norman. Which IT company recently fired 300 its employees who were found to be working for competitors at the same time? Which is moonlighting. Moonlighting, you could write this simple definition. Also called also called side hustle side hustle h u s t l e side hustle side hustle or side gig g i g gig or side job or side job side job dash so what is moonlighting have a second job have a second job Comma. Usually or typically secretly, typically secretly and at night and at night, that's why moonlight and at night, in addition to, in addition to one's regular employment, O-N-E apostrophe S, one's regular employment, one's regular employment. So in the day people would work for company A, in the night, late evenings people would work for company B. So companies have been quite categorical stating that no we don't want such things to happen. But um, the union minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar has said I don't see anything wrong with that. Let's see how it works. Hmm? You know the CEOs of these companies? Infosys, Salil Parekh, Salil Parekh, recently these kinds of questions, this kind of question like the CEO of Apple came in the RRB exam, my friends, okay. Infosys, CEO, RRB on 24th September, so latest. Uh, Infosys CEO is Salil Parekh, Salil, S-A-L-I-L, Salil Parekh, next. TCS, Rajesh Gopinathan. Rajesh Gopinathan, Tech Mahindra, Chandar Prakash Gurnani, Chandar Prakash Gurnani, G U R N A N I, Gurnani. Next, Vipro, Theory de la Porte, Theory, T H I E R. R Y theory de la Porte D E L A P O R T E theory de la Porte H C L Technologies C Vijay Kumar C Vijay Kumar Which e-commerce major announced its plans to set up a solar farm with a combined capacity of 420 megawatts in India? Amazon. Amazon CEO is Andy Jassy. Andy. A-N-D-Y. Andy Jassy. J-A-S-S-Y. Andy Jassy. Snapdeal. Co-founders. You could write Snapdeal co-founders. Kunal Bahal. Kunal. K U N A L Kunal Bahal B A H L Kunal Bahal and Rohit Bansal Rohit Bansal B A N S A L Next Flipkart co founded by founder sir Binni Bansal B I N N Y Binni Bansal and Sachin Bansal Sachin Bansal See Rohit, Sachin and Binni are not related. Okay. Next. See Mintra is owned by Flipkart. Mintra is owned by Flipkart and Flipkart is owned by Walmart. Mintra is owned by Flipkart. Flipkart is owned by Walmart. Who is the CEO of Walmart? Doug Macmillan. You could write this. Doug. D-O-U-G or Doug. D-O-U-G. Doug Macmillan, M C M I L L O N, Macmillan. 
Okay. Amazon is the world's largest internet company, my friends. Largest, super large, about four hundred billion dollar turnover. The tenth India Brazil South Africa dialogue forum called. See, these three countries together are called IPSA. The dialogue forum, the IPSA dialogue for, forum, trilateral trilateral ministerial conference meeting or con, con commission meeting was held in New Delhi. No, it was held in New York. I'm sorry, New York. Um, New York is the biggest city in America. It was, you know, what was it called in the past? It is called New Amsterdam. Find out why they called it New Amsterdam and how it became New York. It's an interesting story. Next, what is IPSA? See, these three countries came together to form a dialogue, you know, to discuss econ economic and political policies. Um, IPSA was started in 2003. You could write this 2003 based on BASED, based on Brasilia Declaration, Brasilia, B R A S I L I A, Brasilia Declaration, Brasilia Declaration, Brasilia Declaration. Okay. Chica. Okay. You have this BRICS, and within BRICS, you have IPSA. Apart from BRICS, these three countries also are part of BRICS. China is missing, Russia is missing. So, but these three are there. Cape Town is one of the three capitals of South Africa. Cape Town, Bloemfontein, and Pretoria, three capitals of South Africa. Uh, South Africa's president is Cyril Ramaphosa. You could write this Cyril, C Y R I L, Cyril. Ramaphosa, R A M A P H O S A, Ramaphosa. And, I'm oh sorry, Cyril Ramaphosa. Um, Brazil's president is Jair Bolsonaro. Jair, J A I R, Jair Bolsonaro. B O L S O N A R O, Bolsonaro. Next. As part of its annual Goalkeepers Campaign, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation recently announced the winners of the 2022 Goalkeepers Global Goal Awards. They're all there. I'm not going to discuss this question. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what's the capital of Uganda? Kampala. K-A-M-P-A-L-A. -A -A. Kampala. Uganda's capital is Kampala. Which is the first bank to receive the Reserve Bank of India's approval for rupee trade? Yuko Bank. Yuko Bank. Its CEO is Soma Sankara Prasad. You could write this. Soma Sankara or Shankara. S-A-N-K-A-R-A. -A. Soma Shankara Prasad. Now, the, the rupee trade is primarily for our trade with Russia. We are buying a lot of oil from Russia, a lot of soybean, fertilizers, all that stuff from Russia. And... Um, we need to pay the Russians. Now we can't pay them in the dollars, euros, for other for international currencies. So what we have told them is, look, we will open another account with your bank called Gazprom Bank. Gazprom Bank. Yuko Bank will have an account with the other bank. So if you want to pay us in rupees, we will deposit rupees in you know in exchange for buying you know what we say uh, crude oil from you, fertilizers from you. We need to pay you. We'll pay rupees and we'll put that money in a particular account with your Gazprom bank. In case you want to buy something from us, use that rupee. Use those rupees. Use those rupees. So it's a win-win. We get what we want and they get to they get what they want from us. Yeah. And um, between April and June this year, India imported. 9.72 uh, 9.7% take 10 billion not 10 9.7 billion take 10 billion dollars worth of stuff 
in three months just three months india imported nine sorry uh, 9.7 kg ka 10 take around figure 10 billion dollars worth of oil and gas plus other stuff from russia how big is this number in the same period april june last year 2021 we imported pretty little this number of 10 billion dollars is up by 370 370 percent yes so our imports from russia in three months have gone up by 370 percent we as i said we buy a lot of oil and gas and that's a major reason why we you know because no one is buying russian oil we are buying yeah Union Bank of India, A. Money Maker Lai, A. Money Maker Lai, he is the CEO. Punjab National Bank, Atul Goyal. Canara Bank, Lingam Venkat Prabhakar, L.V. Prabhakar, L.V. Prabhakar, L.V. Prabhakar. Kaivalya Vohra, the guy on the left, yeah, the guy on the left, the taller chap. Kaivalya Vohra has emerged as the youngest Indian to have net worth over 1000 crore in the IIFL Wealth Hurun India Rich List. He is a co-founder of Zepto. As you know, Zepto is a, a speed delivery grocery service. Mm, speed delivery service. So these two guys started Zepto. That is Kaivalya Bohara and the other guy is Adit Palicha. Adit A-A-L-I Sorry. A-A-D-I-T Adit a A D I T Adit Palicha P A L I C H A P A L I C H A yeah. Both of them dropped out of college to pursue their dreams and these are the guys who started Zepto. Okay. Coming to okay, we could take one more company's name. Zomato. This was started by um, Dipinder Goyal. Dipinder Goyal. G O Y A L Goyal and Pankaj Chadda Pankaj Chadda C H H A D D A Chadda. Okay, chalo, one more company. Okay, recently Zomato purchased Blinkit. Now, Blinkit was originally called Grofers, so E Grofers is now called D Blinkit. Blinkit is owned by one, not ABCD. Sorry, I went by that uh, ABCD. So, Grofers is now called Blinkit. Blinkit has been acquired by Zomato in a $568 million deal. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's more than 4,300 crore money. Yeah. Nearly 4,300 crores. Zomato paid Blink to acquire Blinkit. Who started Blinkit? You could write this. Saurabh Kumar. Saurabh Kumar. And Albinder Dinsa. Albinder. A-L-B-I-N-D-E-R. Albinder Dinsa. D-H-I-N-D-S-A. Albinder Dinsa. Enough, yeah. Then, Joe, some other time. You discuss a lot of stuff here. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for being here. Have a lot of fun. Stay curious. But as I mentioned earlier, please share feedback. It would help. If you like the story on Iran or something more, you want me to discuss something more, something that is not there in this, this kind of video, please share feedback. Please put your questions. I'll bring those in. You know, if they're really important. Thank you for being here. Have a lot of fun. And stay curious.